Greetings all, Devious Monkey here. Okay, today I just want to talk about this two cam setup. I believe I've got this all figured out. Now, nothing's going to change with the main Cinerig setup using the A6600 and then Atomos Ninja 5. What is going to change from what I did on the first video where I did this two cam setup is on this camera. What I was using was my ZV-1 on the monopod. And whilst I got the angle right and I got all that right and, and I was able to sync both footages with the audio perfectly and eventually figure out how to edit so that I could go back and forth between the cameras, what happened was obvious and that the footage off of the ZV-1 didn't look good. Definitely didn't look as good as the stuff that was coming out of the A6600 Cinerig. And it also didn't match in color or it just looked dull and, and it looked not as good. So what I did was I decided, well, okay, even though I'm not shooting through HDMI into the Ninja, I still should use the other A6600 and just set it up exactly the same. So that's what I've done. I've taken all the settings for this one, the Cinerig, and I've matched them on the B cam, so to speak. And by doing that and having it roughly the same place so it should be getting the same lighting, I think it looks actually pretty comparable to this. Now I'm a little bit brighter up here off the Cinerig because I'm dead right in front of the Niebuhr and I'm in the center of where, where I'm supposed to be by using one cam. And over here, you can definitely see that over here there's more light compared to on this side. This side, I just have my little lamp up there that's matching the, the, the yellowish light that's all around me. But over here, and this is all a matter of, of it being daytime, you can see when I move my hand over here that I'm covering, basically it's, it's a little afternoon on a bright sunny day. So even with the blinds closed and that sheer little black curtain over it, I'm still getting a lot of daylight coming through, which doesn't really make that much of a difference here, but it makes it really obvious there because this side is the darker side of the room and this side is the side with the window where I'm getting all the light. But the footage that's coming off of the B-roll cam, so to speak, the other A6600 looks good. It, I mean, I can see it in the screen that it looks better than it did when it was coming off the ZV-1. I could sit there and I could play with it and I could dick around and I could try the settings and I could do this and I could do that. Or I could just throw the A6600 up on here and match it to this one and know that it's gonna be comparable enough that when I pull the footages off and merge everything that I gotta do and start editing, that it's gonna look just as good as this one. When I was doing all this editing now, and which was all new to me, because I haven't done a two cam setup like this before. It, it brought up a whole host of problems with editing that I had come across before that I never dealt with. And that was when you have two different sets of footages on your timeline, basically, all right, I knew this, whatever's on top is what shows up. So if you don't want the stuff that's on top and you want what's coming out of the bottom, then you have to remove the stuff that's on top. When you're doing this now, because I'm taking footage from this 6600 and putting it over on top of this 6600, now what's happened is that this cam's footage has to be directly linked to this camera's footage. And there's no getting around that in Final Cut Pro. There has to be a main footage on the timeline that everything is associated to, whether it be other video from another camera or audio from an external audio device. It all gets linked to the main footage on the timeline. If I delete footage from this timeline so that this is the main view and it shows on the top. If I get rid of this, I found that it also got rid of that. And that was a problem because I was like, well, what the hell? How the hell am I supposed to do this if I don't, you know, like, come on. So what I did, of course, as I said before in my other video, Google is your friend. I went to Google and I started typing in how the hell do I get rid of B-roll without getting rid of A-roll and things like that in Final Cut. The other maddening thing that I also mentioned about when you go to Google is that when you type something in, you can get 50 billion hits on whatever you typed in. 80 to 85% of them are all old. Some of them were back in like 2014, 2011. It's not the same program. Six months ago, it's not the same program. It, it's incredibly maddening. So I had to keep going through and, and looking at things and trying to determine which made the most sense and which were the most accurate 
for me today with the software that I'm using. Eventually I found one video that showed how to get rid of the footage that you don't want whilst keeping it attached to the main timeline. Eventually, once I figured that out, then it just, it became very simple. Now, because I've got a footage B-roll on top of A-roll, when I do the cut, I have to make sure I do it twice so that it's cutting both the B-roll and the A-roll because I got to remove both chunks if I'm getting, like if I'm editing out my uh or my throat clearing, which is also annoying. When you get rid of that, you have to make sure that you get rid of it from both the B-roll and the A-roll so that where you have everything synced up slides over and you don't lose the sync of the audio going with both footages off of this cam and this cam. And that way it becomes a, an absolute nightmare if you don't have the footages synced together because then you're trying to move things over manually. And it, yeah, no way. That's the whole thing that I was saying about how I, I want to be able to do this without having to sit here and edit for five hours. So it didn't, it took a couple of, of cuts for me to realize what I had to do and how I had to pay attention to it to get rid of stuff that I was getting rid of from both the A roll and the B roll. Basically, if you want to get rid of something, but you have to keep it tied to the timeline, you have to do a, uh, you have to select what you want to get rid of and go down, right click it, and then it says remove from story line. And I might be saying that wrong, but that when you right click it, it's down towards the bottom and it says remove from story line. And then what happens is that let's say it's this footage that you want to get rid of because I have this footage over everything. You select what you want to get rid of, you right click it, you hit remove from storyline, and what it does is it takes this footage and it lifts it and it goes above both the A roll and the B roll, leaving a gray patch where it used to be. And then you can just keep it selected, hit delete, it goes away. So now the portion of this is gone but there's still a little gray area where it was supposed to be because there has to be something tied to the main timeline. Then it shows this footage right here. I probably at some point will go through how I edit once I get smooth with all of this and I'll just do an actual like screenshot of, of what's going on because I know it's really hard to hear somebody talk about it without seeing it in front of you. I, I know it is for me. I still posted the original video because that was just a test to prove to myself that I could do it and use a second cam and interact with the two footages but keeping the audio exactly the same. And I knew that the footage off of this cam, which was the ZV-1, was very subpar compared to this cam, but I wanted to show the progression of, of how I figured it out. And I think I've got it figured out to the point where it, it isn't really, other than a couple of clicks, all that much different from the editing that I normally do. And this way now I can spice it up with B cam footage, like I said. And of course, I know that I'm keeping this stuff tight in, and here's why. The Cinerig that I use mainly, that's showing everything around me, and that I finally got all squared away with no hunting and all that crap. That's the A6600 with the Sigma 16 1.4. Now I have the Sigma set to 1.4 and that's why I'm in focus and, and there's that defocus all around me. And that's just not because I love the blur in the background, it's because the damn thing doesn't hunt like it was, which was annoying the shit out of me. So that's the way I kept it. Now, when I had the ZV-1 going over here, obviously I couldn't go down to 1.4 because that lens doesn't go down to 1.4 and the way I did the test I just I kept it on aperture priority and and it figured everything out other than going 1 50th Because I'm shooting at 24 frames per second But now I wanted to match everything between these two so that's why this a6600 now has the Sigma 30 millimeter 1.4 because that's The next lens that I had that's a 1.4 remember I had the three sisters. I've got the 16 1.4 the 31.4, and then over there, I've got the 56 1.4, which is too tight, and I'd have to have the camera on the other side of the room. You can see how much smaller this is. Now, this camera isn't, I like, all right, this one, I can touch. This one, I've got, I've got to reach out a little bit to get to it, but I can still get to it. And you can see how much tighter it is around me. But I thought that's okay, because I'm, I'm really focusing on this and just eventually cutting to that. The bottom line is, is that I, I wanted to have 1.4. So everything is, is on, the movie mode but it's set with manual controls so that i can control everything again the settings match on both cameras now 1.4 1.4 so now i have me in focus everything else is sort of defocused enough 
and there's no hunting and it all looks relatively similar as far as colors and lighting and everything. I'm assuming, I haven't taken this off and looked at it yet, but I'm gonna just say that it's gonna look better than it did when I had the A6600 here and the ZV-1 here. And that's the way it goes. Okay, I don't really need to, to belabor the point. The point is, is that I figured out, I think, how to do an in-studio two cam setup with my two A6600s. And again, main center rig, A6600 with a Sigma 1.4, B cam, A6600 with the Sigma 30 1.4. And it, they are both set to 1.4, blah, 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 blah. All the same white balance, all the same lighting, good to go. And that's it. I think it's a success. And this way I can sort of spice things up. And I'm gonna try not to be too dizzying by going back and forth and back and forth and all that kind of stuff because that would be kind of annoying. Just occasionally to get rid of this one view and cut to that view. Or again, if I wanna break the fourth row and go, I wish he'd stop talking. He's already said it like 50 times. You know, shit like that. So that's the way we're gonna go. All right, that's all I've got for you. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, leave them down below. I'd love to hear from you. As always, thanks for joining me. Like, subscribe, and all that shit. And remember, kids, forward and up.